All right, so let's get into our agenda with the winner himself. The first Port Adelaide player to claim the Brownlow medal, and it happened in a count that saw record-setting and record-equalling feats across the board. And I declare the winner of the 2021 Brownlow medal is Ollie Wines of the Port Adelaide Football Club. Sorry, I didn't prepare these myself. I was... Um a little bit late to the, to the party, but um, Chris Davies, my footy manager, has put some notes together for me. I think more than anything, this is a, a football club award. Uh, it doesn't take an individual, it takes a, a team, a, a football club, not just a football department, the admin staff, um, everyone to get someone to this point. Here is Wines, right on cue. I'm, I'm not sure about the numbers. I don't look into the numbers too much, but 36 sounds like a lot, so um, <laughs> I'm happy with it, yeah. There's so many great players that I still look up to at my age and they've had tremendous seasons and, and a lot of them are obviously playing on, on Saturday in the, in the biggest game of the year and um, I'm extremely envious of them. And I'm a very home orientated person and had a really good upbringing with my family and it was a little bit shocked to go to Port Adelaide and there was a few tears from mum and dad and myself on the night but I guess it's only strengthened me to, to the person I am today and to be honest, it's, it's the best decision the club could have made for me and I think they've developed me into the man I am today and, and I'm very proud of that. I'd love to be a fly on the wall, either back in the Tuga where mum and dad are or in North Melbourne where my uh, siblings are. I think this is uh, credit to them and um, their commitment to me and um, it's a privilege to win it. I guess in the narrow honour. Superb family scenes <laughs> stitched into all of that. Now, it's been a frantic day played out across two states, but we've shared so much of the Ollie Wines journey that we couldn't let tonight pass without asking him to pull over roadside <laughs> and have a chat to us. Ollie, congratulations. It's always great to have you on 360. Thanks, guys. I must apologise. It's been a frantic day. I'm still... Um, geez, that light's not good, is it? Uh, I'm <laughs> way home. It's, uh, I'm nearly... I'm nearly there, but, um, yeah, no, glad to be on with you. Oh, Ollie, I do want to say, Robbo would approve of this setup enormously, <laughs> so he'll be at home having a good giggle, I reckon. <laughs> no, he would be. Now, tell me this, how much of the family media time are you aware of? Because they have rivalled you, I reckon, today. Yeah, certainly. Um, Mum's not afraid of the spotlight. She loves sort of talking to the media and talking all their kids up, so uh, they have a... They probably had as much as me. Um, <laughs> they're getting texts and, and calls and everything saying how well they're doing. So, um, look, I'm glad they're happy. They've, they've ridden the motions over the last 18 months, particularly through Victoria's lockdowns. And, and uh, to see my siblings so excited as well, uh, I'm very happy. Ollie, congratulations. Fantastic season. I'm a little concerned uh, a gentleman sitting in a dark car pulled over on the street could lead to some people getting a little <laughs> worried about that and maybe making a phone call too, but we hope it goes OK. Mate, tell us about the day. How's it been for you today? Yeah, it's, it's still definitely um, hasn't sunk in at this stage and I think, to be honest, it's probably going to take months or perhaps even years to, to realise what I achieved last night. I think um, to have my name next to, to guys that I've idolised and legends of the game is, is something that um, baffles me a little bit still. But um, in saying that, I, I was really happy with my year and um, through some team success and a little bit of luck here and there, I've, I've been able to um, win it. I love the embrace with Kenny Hinckley. What did he whisper in your ear, mate? Uh, I can't remember. I'm going to have to ring, uh, remember back on that because that's, that would be a pretty important moment, I'd imagine. I, I'm sure he would... He would be able to remind me, but um, look, I turned straight to Kenny. He's been the, the biggest influence on, on my career as a footballer and um, coming in day one and, and having him as sort of my football role model has been so special for my development and um, all we want to do now is, is get him a premiership. Was it an, was it an anxious night? Was it a torturous night? Is You were the favourite and once you're solidly in contention and polling well... It's hard not to run it through to its conclusion. And, you know, I guess at some stage you go, I really want to win this. Yeah, no, it does come to that point uh, late in the night and you've got eight other guys predicting votes and, and yelling my ear and saying, <laughs> you're home, you're home, you're home. But I guess nothing's certain. And it was, wasn't probably until the last 
two or three rounds where I knew I, I had some good games and um, the bond sort of dropped off a little bit that I, I got really nervous. And, and then going into that last round and knowing sort of the, the games Bokey and I had, um, I knew I was probably going to get something there. Can you believe you polled in 16 games, Oli, and 11 of the last 12? I mean, that's extraordinary stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it is, I think. Um, I'm a little bit, yeah, shook with that still, but um, I think a lot of my votes this year came off really good team success and um, just playing my role when everyone else playing theirs and we were able to get wins and unfortunately I was able to sort of get noticed in those games. So um, it, is, it is a big number and something that, uh, yeah, I haven't wrapped my head around. You mentioned Kenny Hinckley as a, as a huge influence on you, Ollie. Just cast your mind back a couple of years, 2019, your co-captain. It's a, an average year by your high standards. But then you bounce back with a really good year last year, then take it to a whole new level this year. What was the catalyst for turning that around? Yeah, I think just a little bit more simplicity in my game and understanding what I've got to do to play my role in the team. I think um, in the past I've probably let my ego get a little bit of control over me and want to do the flashy things and, and kick the flashy goals and that. But uh, at the end of the day, what I've got to do is at the contest and at the cold face of winning the footy. And I went into games pretty uh, clear-minded knowing that this year and, and it made it easy to, easy to play. We spoke this morning, Ollie, around the, being a Port Adelaide person for your journey and the, the flex moment that comes where you have to make that decision. I'm not quite sure if you, how explicit you want to be. How close did you get to, to leaving? Did, did you legitimately explore uh, being somewhere else? Yeah, there were a few conversations had um, between my, me and my manager and, and then sort of a little bit with the club um, and just sort of testing where they were at and... I think every player at some point in their career will, will have that. Um, you've got to do, like, particularly these days in, in the football world, you've got to do what's right by you as a player because um, we see so many, I guess, cutthroat delistings and, and things like that these days. So I had to sort of weigh up what was best for my career at the time and thankfully the club didn't want me to go anywhere and, and had full faith in me and I, I'm so um, proud of my footy club, I guess, for, for sticking by me and, and um, here we are. So what was the biggest factor in resolving that to stay and to, to be Port Adelaide's first Brownlow medalist? Uh, it was probably Kenny, to be honest. Kenny said, um, pretty much, you're not going anywhere, mate. Like, I, <laughs> I want you here. And um, he's got full trust in me to, to continue to improve as a player and, and get to um, be a part of that sort of elite midfield brigade. And he's put a, a lot of trust in me with the midfield and given me a lot of responsibility to... Um, lead the midfield, and um, so it was probably down to Kenny, to be honest. So you've ticked the Brownlow box, and you gave a lot of credit to your teammates. So now we look for the ultimate success as a team. That's a premiership. You've had back-to-back -back home preliminary final losses. That has to have some sort of psychological scarring on the group. How do the players and the coaches uh, intend to deal with that, do you think? Yeah, certainly I think there will be some, um, some scars Mentally, for the boys, you, you can't lose... Well, I've lost three preliminary finals now, so I've got three, and a lot of the boys have got two and, and not be scarred in a way. I think time yeah, is the best healer of wounds at times, so we're going to let the next couple of months go, go by and um, move on, but i definitely got to look at the game and understand what went wrong. We, we had no excuses on the night to play, and, and Bulldogs perhaps had a few, so they were terrific, and, and we didn't turn up, and, um, yeah, we paid the consequences. When do you think you might get back to Echuca? And I imagine there'll be demands that you take the medal with you when you do. Yeah, certainly we'll be back there. Um, I'm hoping early November. I'm going to sort of wait until things open up a little bit. But, um, yeah, I'll certainly be uh, having a bit of an event back then. There's so many people back then that are back there that follow my journey still and follow me with a really keen interest. So um, hopefully to show the young kids there that anything's possible for them. So um, dream big and... and yeah, you can reach your dreams. Ollie, I'm really curious. We know how hard players work and how hard they train, and you deserve all the time off you get, but when you have time off, when you have holidays, how much fitness work do you have to keep doing? Yeah, a lot. Um, we usually get two to three weeks off running, and, and then you're back into a running program, which is about four times a week, um, and then you've got your gym in, involved too. So usually um, footballers... Uh, 
sort of don't like doing nothing. So um, we start a little bit earlier and it's not too hard to train, but uh, we'll get pretty busy sort of the start of October and, and then build into November, December and um, hit the ground running in January. Ollie, terrific. Actually, this is when Robbo would ask, is your dog in the back seat there? <laughs> she is. I've, um, I've just... I've just... Billy, Billy, look. <laughs> she's, there, she's um. I've just picked her up from my girlfriend's house. I've dropped her home and um, she's knackered, so we're just <laughs> nearly home now. <laughs> very good. Ollie, we've loved sharing yeah. the journey with you. Thank you much, so very much for pulling over tonight and having a chat to us, and well done. No worries, guys. Appreciate well done, the support. Ollie Wines, the 2021 Brownlow medalist. Terrific. He's a good chat, isn't he? He is, he is. <laughs> All right, our coaches, they bring the weights of nine premierships to the desk tonight. They've been the dominant coaches of the recent era. Alastair Clarkson and Damien Hardwick to put us in the middle of grand final week. The two teams that are before us and a question or two about the future.